Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to look at what we call the non-discrete probability distribution and more often it's probably called the non-discrete probability function. In other words, we can have a discrete value. An example, uh, let's say we ask the question, how long will a light bulb last? Well, it can last a thousand hours and five seconds, a thousand hours and 3.4 seconds, uh, 1200 hours and five, five uh, minutes and two seconds and there's an infinite range, a continuous possibility, a continuous number of values that are possible for the length of the life of a light bulb. So if we were to graph that out, for example, let's say we have a, we have a million light bulbs and uh, how long will they last and if you were to graph them out, the graph would probably look something like this. You see that uh, there's a, be a cluster of them, the great majority of them, that would be somewhere around the expected lifespan of a light bulb of maybe a thousand hours. Some will have shorter lifespans, some will have longer lifespans before they burn out. So for a great number of light bulbs, we have on the vertical axis the frequency of occurrence, how many will last for about that long. And, but the thing is, it would be a continuous distribution because no two light bulbs would last exactly the same amount of time. So what we can then do is we can draw what we call a probability function. So the vertical axis is a function of x. x will be the number of hours or in, in, in essence the amount of time and it would be in an integer number of hours but the total amount of time the light bulbs would last. And you may want to ask the question, what is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1200 hours? Well, again, the definition is that the total sum of all the probabilities should add up to 1. And the way to do that when it's a non-discrete or a continuous function like this, you can say that the probability then would be equal to the integral, or matter of fact, what I should say is maybe we can just call it like a probability function like this, maybe that's a better way to say it, and we can then say that the integral from x equals 0 to x equals infinity all the possible values, all the way out to infinity, of the probability function, well, that must add up to 1. And of course, if you remember a little bit of your calculus, if we integrate over this function, that means the area underneath should add up to 1. And that's what we know about the probability function. We'll get into that in a lot more detail in some examples later on. Right now, I just wanted to show you that there is indeed a different way of looking at discrete probability distributions and what we call non-discrete or continuous probability distributions. And so there's a whole lot of videos that will go on these kind of examples as well. But right now I just want you to understand the difference. And so if we want to answer this question for those who've had a little bit of calculus before, you can then say that the probability of x being less than or equal to 1200 hours and that would be the area of the curve to the left of the point where x equals 24, uh, 1200 hours. So it would be the area here as, of, as a uh, function of the entire area, would be, which would be equal to 1. This would then be the integral from 0 to 1200. And that would, of course, be x equals 0 to x equals 1200 of the function this defined by this, p of x dx. And that, that would be equal to, let's say, maybe 0 0.65 or so. In other words, you'd come up with a number between 0 and 1, probably more than 50%, but somewhere between 0 and 1, and in this example, 0 0.65. Uh, that means that of all the light bulbs, you would expect 65% of them to last 1,200 hours or less, and then 35% would last 1,200 hours or more, as an example. And that's what we do with these non-discrete type of probability functions. So that's the difference between discrete and non-discrete, or discrete and continuous. And so at least they'll show you what the difference is, and then we'll get back to this later. But first we're going to show you some more examples of the discrete type and what to do with that and how to draw the various graphs. So stay tuned if you're still interested in this kind of material.